Are you guys looking for a solid booking plugin for your WordPress websites? Well, today I got you guys covered. As you guys know, I dig through the, the trenches and I test out various plugins and I came across one plugin that I think is the best booking plugin for WordPress. So first, let me give you guys a quick little overview about this plugin and then I'll walk you through a complete tutorial on how to use it. With this booking plugin, your customers will first be prompted to select a location. Once they select a location, it will then ask them what kind of staff they want to work with. You can add as many staff as you want and give your staff the option to log in and configure their own appointments. When the customer selects the staff, they will then select from a specific service. You can also create categories. For example, we have a dental clinic that offers various services like oral hygiene, implants, and tooth whitening. So I'll go ahead and select a service. Next, your customers will be prompted to select a date and time for their appointment. So I'll go ahead and schedule an appointment here. After they select the dates, they will then input their personal information such as their first name, last name, the email, and also a phone number where they can be reached at. Next, they'll be brought to their confirmed details section where they will see their date, their time, the staff, and also the location. They can also go ahead and pay on your website with PayPal or credit card, or they can go ahead and pay you locally at your business. After that, they'll get a confirmation for their records. They will also get an email notifying them of new appointments, and you will also get an email notifying you of a new appointment booking. Next, let's talk about the customer dashboard. The dashboard is really clean and organized. On the dashboard, it'll show you the appointment dates, your customers, the services, and all the money you've made on your website. On the left side, you'll see you have appointments, calendars, payments, customers, and just additional tabs that you can go through. On these tabs, you can create your staff. So for example, I have all my staff right here. You'll also be able to add your locations. So all the locations that your business is operating in, you can add those locations here. And lastly, the services. The service creator has two different styles. You can select from a list view where it'll display all of the services as a list view. However, I really do like this graphic view. The graphic view is where you can see the services that are created, making it really easy to see what kind of services you offer. You can always add more categories, more services, add more staff, and everything that you need for services on this page here. You can always adjust the text and the color of your form. You'll also have the option to click on create a new style where you can create a new form from scratch from the ground up. Next, your customers will also have their own personal custom dashboard where they can view their appointments. And if they click on this little timer right here, they can always cancel or they can reschedule their appointments. Now this is an optional feature and I'll walk you through on how to use it in this video. But overall, I think this booking plugin is very convenient. Compared to a lot of other booking plugins, sometimes things can get complicated or users get lost. But with this plugin, it just gives a very user-friendly experience. And I think this is a great plugin to have on your website. So if you guys are ready, let's walk you through on how to use it. So as you guys can see, it's a pretty solid booking plugin, right? There's, there's no BS here, you know? It has everything that you need. It looks great. And I just love the customer experience uh, with it because it's really easy to navigate. So this is the plugin. It is called Booknetic. Now there is a link below in the description if you guys do want to purchase it. If you guys don't want to purchase it, no problem. Just hang out with me and, and you guys can watch it and see how it operates to see if it's something that you might want to add on one of your WordPress websites. So the plugin costs 79 bucks. But just remember guys, uh, other booking plugins, you have to pay a subscription and this plugin, you pay a one-time fee. So that's one big advantage of using this plugin. So go ahead and add it to the cart and go ahead and buy it. And uh, once you guys do that, it'll then be available in your download section. Now, in case you guys are a total noob and you guys don't know how to add in uh, uh, plugins to your WordPress website, I'll walk you through it. You know, I'll, I'll do that service. Since you guys decided to uh, buy it, I'll walk you guys through on how to uh, upload it to your website. So here we have the download section. You will then just click on install WordPress file only. And then we're going to go to our website and upload it. Now I'm going to use this demo website today. So this is using one of the Astra starter templates. It's actually pretty crazy. They had a big updates. I should be doing a video on Astra pretty soon, but they offered a lot more templates and they actually changed the interface of how their starter sites work. It's a really cool process. I really do like it. So once you guys go ahead and uh, download the plugin, we'll then go to our WordPress dashboard and now we're going to upload it. So let's do that. Let's go over here to plugins and click on add new and then upload plugin, choose the file, and then you'll go ahead and download the Booknetic plugin. So here it is, Booknetic. I'll double click on it and then click on install now. Also, let me know in the comments how you guys are doing. You know, right now I, I feel good. You know, I've been, I've actually been going to bed earlier. So I've been waking up earlier and I'm telling you like, it's a night and day difference. I feel so much more energized. I feel, I feel great. You know, and when I go to bed at like two o'clock in the morning, like I always wake up and I just feel bad. You know, I'm just like, yeah, I should have gone to bed earlier, you know, and 
I don't know. I'm trying to wake up at eight o'clock now every day. You know, who knows? Maybe, maybe I'm just getting older. Is that what you old people do? You guys go to sleep really early. All right. So once you guys uh, download the plugin and upload it uh, right now, let's click on activate plugin. Now, as soon as you guys activate it, you'll see that you have this book and edit option on the bottom left. Go ahead and click on this. All right, now you'll go ahead and enter in your purchase code. Now you can find your purchase code if you go to your dashboard section and click on this purchase code. Then you will see your purchase code in that little notepad. So it is a notepad. You'll just go ahead and take that and then you will uh, put it in uh, right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my purchase code. Then you'll go ahead and say how you found it. Just say Daryl right here, other, and then put like Daryl Wilson, you know, or I don't, I, don't, I don't know if we can even do that. I, I don't know, you know, whatever. You don't have to, no big deal. Uh, so once I put in my purchase code, I will then click on install. All right, so we have installed this booking plugin. Now I love this dashboard, right? It's so clean. And you know what's also really cool is that usually when people see this, they think it's some other platform, but no, this is actually in the back end of your WordPress website. So at the top right here, if I click on WordPress, it just takes me back to my actual WordPress dashboard. So uh, it looks like it's some other, you know, SaaS platform, but no, this is actually in the back end of WordPress. So right away when you install the plugin, it'll then prompt you to enter in some information on the right hand side. So we have company details. So this is where you're going to put in your details about your company. So um, I'll just I'll make up some what, what business are we today? We'll do uh, Daryl's Daryl's uh, salon. I, I don't know. We're, we're, we're making a salon today. I'll just put in an address here, Las Vegas, and then my phone number, right? And then my website. So we'll put in my website here. It is kind of blocking, which is kind of whatever, but uh, no big deal. And then here, uh, you'll go ahead and enter an image that represents your business. So I'll go ahead and click on this. And I actually have some images in this folder right here. Uh, we'll go ahead and just use this one. Or, yeah, we'll just use this one for now, right? To represent my business, okay? Now, once you enter the details on the top right, you'll click on save changes. Pretty simple, you guys with me? All right, cool. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I didn't lose you guys yet. You know, you guys are smart. You guys are a smart bunch. There we go. So save changes. So next we have the hours of operation. And right here we have 9 p.m. I'm sorry, 9 a.m. And then we also have 6 p.m. Now uh, you guys can adjust these time zones in the settings because I know in America, uh, we don't use this time uh, zone. So Europe, Asia, they use this time zone. I've actually gotten kind of used to it now because living in Asia so long. But so you'll go ahead and select the hours of operation. And don't worry, again, you can change this in the settings. Uh, and I'll walk you guys through that a little bit later. But uh, you'll go ahead and put in the days that you are operating. And uh, if you guys do want to go ahead and get rid of that, just click on that I and then just put the add day off and add day off. So right now I'm basically saying I'm only open on Monday through Friday, right? 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Monday through Friday. Or you can change it to whatever you want, right? You guys can also add a break, right? So let's say you guys have a lunch break. We'll click on add break. And then you'll just go ahead and select a break, right? So um, from 12 o'clock, right? From 12 o'clock to, when are we on lunch here? You know, we're, we're, we're taking a break here, you know? I know like the Japanese restaurants in America, it drives me nuts, but they're like closed from like two, like 1 p.m. or something to like 3 p.m. They're closed for like a three hour gap or something. It's, it's it drives me nuts. Cause I, I really want to get sushi sometimes in the United States. And it's just like, it's always closed, you know? So it's like the struggles, you know, the struggles. So once you guys go ahead and select the business hours, we will then click on save changes there. All right, now let's open up this little uh, little box right here and let's keep on let's keep on going, keep on chugging. So next let's add a location. So where are you? Well, I'm gonna click on add a location at the top right. And now we have this little um, this little pop open, right? So I'm gonna put Las Vegas, Las Vegas, right? And here I'll put in a little image, right? Las Vegas. Cool little image. And then I'll just put in just a fictitious Las Vegas Boulevard. I think Las Vegas Boulevard's on the strip, right? And then you'll put in your phone number and your description. All right, and I'll click on add a location. Don't worry about the Google Maps. Uh, I do have another video on that and I'll walk you guys through that um, next time. But uh, Google Maps, you do need to get an API key and I'll have a video and I'll, 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 I'll hook you guys up later. Don't worry, I'll tell you guys where to go. All right, and let's just say you have two locations, right? So we're gonna click on add a location again, but this time we're gonna give, we have an, an office in Montana. You know, Montana never gets love. You know what's so funny is that uh, all these people who come to the United States, they always go to San Francisco or something. And it's like, don't go to San Francisco. That, that, is, that is not fair. Go to Montana. Montana is beautiful. In fact, just take a look at this, you know, Montana. Montana, right? And just go to Montana. 
go to Google Images here. And Montana is just such a beautiful state. It, it really is, because I have a lot of friends who want to go to the United States, and they say, where should I go? And I says, go to Montana. It's so beautiful, you know, and it's ice mountains. You got the the, the elk running around. It's just, so, it's so amazing. But but uh, let's let's not get off topic here, Daryl. Let's, let's go back. So we'll go ahead and uh, click on Browse, and I will put in a mountain. You know, people are like, what what's Montana? It's just, it's, I've had that talk here in coffee shops and people don't even know about the state of Montana, but, and then I'll just put in a, an address. So I don't know, Montana Boulevard, whatever. Okay. And then I'll click on add a location. All right. So we have one location in Montana and we have one other location in Las Vegas. Okay. Now I think the, the only drawback with this plugin is that you can't add states and add specific subcategories of that state. Uh, I did talk to the developer and I believe they are adding that feature in, but at the current moment, I don't think they have that feature, not unless I'm just some sort of noob, but uh, you can always just put like the, the state and the actual you know city. So it's not like a total loss, right? But let's go ahead and click on, um, so we did create location. Now let's create staff. So who works at your business, right? Now, if it's just one person, uh, you could just put one person, just put like the admin or just the business name. However, if you add, if you have unique employees, let's go ahead and add those in here. So I'll click on add staff. And for the full name, we got Rebecca, Rebecca, and she is a stylist, right? And then, you know, Rebecca at AOL.com, right? And then you can also put her number in here. Uh, you can also give her the option to log in or this plugin will actually create a new user for her. So with WordPress, I'm sure you guys know that um, if you guys have new users, uh, you guys can add those existing users to the account by going to users. Like for example, we'll go back here. Let me just give you a quick example, just to not, I don't wanna jump all over the place, but I don't want you guys to get lost. You guys can go over here to users and click on add new. So right here, you can add a new user, right? So you can enter in Rebecca, all of her details before you actually go to that section. And then on this section right here, you can use that as an existing WordPress user. However, the plugin will also go ahead and just create a new one on your behalf if you wanna do that. So let's do that. So this is her user password. So this is what she's gonna to use to log in. And I will just type in Booknetic here and go ahead and put in an image of Rebecca if you have it or an image of your staff because uh, people will see this. So we got this beautiful woman right here. Now, where does Rebecca work? Well, Rebecca works in Las Vegas. Now we don't have any services yet, so we will come back to this after we add some services. All right, and once that's all done, I'll click on add a staff. All right, cool, so we got Rebecca working. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on add a new staff and I will also add myself as a new staff. All right, so I went ahead and I filled out some information. Now for locations, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select both of them this time. So I'm basically gonna say I work at both locations. Okay, so you can always do that if you wanna do that. And then here, I'll also click on add staff. So I'm adding myself and I'm also adding Rebecca. So we're we're a team, you know, we're holding down the fort here. So uh, we have our staff, right? Now we'll go ahead and go to uh, create a service. So this is the last part of our kind of walkthrough right here. So, so next we'll go ahead and add in our services. So what do we offer at the salon, right? Now there's two different ways on how to do this. You guys can use the list view like this or you'll click on graphic view and you can create uh, your services like this. I personally like this a lot better. You know, it's just easier for me to see, right? So let's go ahead and shrink this down. You're getting annoying. So here we have categories, right? So what do we offer at the salon? So I'll click on this plus. Now, let's say for example, you offer different services, right? Let's say for example, you own a gym and you have yoga classes, you have weightlifting classes, you have uh, cardio, whatever, you can create those specific categories and then classes for those categories. But I'll just keep this basic right here. So this is the haircut. All right, so we have haircut, right? And maybe also we have a beard, right? We can shave beards, right? So I'll go ahead and add in another category. And this would be like the beard shave, you know, maybe some guys are really serious about that stuff. So you know, we have a we have the haircut and we also have the beard shave. Now also we'll add in one more, you know, we'll just add in one more right here. We'll also do makeup, you know, maybe Rebecca can also do the makeup at our salon, right? So we have uh, makeup, we have haircuts, and we also have the beard shave. So for the haircut, what kind of haircuts do we offer, right? So let's just go ahead and click on plus. And here we can create a subcategory if we wanna do that, but I think that's a little bit too much. So I'll just add in one service right here. So I'll click on service. Now in the demo of Booknetic, you guys can see uh, they have created a category of dental clinic, and then they have these services within that um, category. So here they have the uh, cosmetic surgery, 
uh, buttock lift, <laughs> right? I, so, I mean, there's there's girls who do it. You know, there there is it, there's there's a need for it. You know, so they have the categories and then they have the services. They don't really have any subcategories here. But let's go back over here and add in the name of the service. So for the haircuts, let's just have a normal haircut, right? Just something very basic. So this will be normal haircut, right? Normal haircuts. Now, I also want to add in an image of this haircut, right? I want something that represent it. So uh, let's go back up here. You got some of my Final Fantasy noises. I use those in my videos. P people like them. I, I like it. You know, I, I like it. It's, it's, I do what I want, <laughs> you know? So uh, here, we'll just add in this. Oh, no, 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 that's a beard. No, 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 no. See, that's the beard one. We got this one here, right? How much does this haircut cost? Well, let's just say it costs 20 bucks, right? Or no, let's, let's just do 25. We're high in, we're, we're high so. We're gonna add in something really expensive here. You guys can also choose to add a deposit. And then if you guys have a tax rate, you guys can add this tax rate right here. So uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what state you're in. Some states have zero sales tax. Some states do have sales tax. So just go ahead and consult your local tax accountants or just look on the internet. You guys can find it. It takes like two minutes. And plus you should know your tax, right? If you're living in your state. If you don't, you've been living under a rock. Now here is the duration. So how long will this haircut take? Well, I'll just say this might take somewhere between, I don't know, 30 minutes is good, right? So next we have the time slot length. Now, I personally recommend leaving this as sloth length as a service duration. So this is basically saying like, how long do you want to have this total session? So maybe usually sometimes you say 30 minutes, but it's actually 40 minutes. So you can say, you know what, let's just fall back on 40 minutes if you wanna do that. Or you can just say, you know what, um, it's just gonna be 30 minutes, right? So you can go ahead and leave that there. Uh, here we have the buffer time before. So this is just like uh, preparation, right? So maybe like five minutes you know, before and then maybe five minutes after saying like, hey man, thank you, you gotta pay, they have to pay, right? And stuff like that. So that might take like five minutes. So you can always add the buffer time before and also after. You guys can choose to have this as a recurring if you wanna do that, it's up to you. You guys can hide the prices and hide the duration in the booking panel. So maybe you don't want them to let them know that it takes 30 minutes, so that's up to you. Uh, here we have the capacity. So if this is a solo, if like this is just a solo haircut, then you would put alone. However, if this is a yoga class, right? There's multiple entries, right? You'll click on group. Now with a group, how many people can enter in this class, right? So you can say, well, we have one and the maximum is 20. Now this can be the same thing for barbers who are offering a barber school, right? How many people can attend your class? So the alone is more of a single service for a one person and the group is more of a group class. So it's multiple people attending at one time. So there is a very big difference there. Just make sure you get that right if you're offering a class or a single service for somebody. But in my specific case, I'm just going to enter in alone. All right, now also right here we have the staff. So we can actually set specific people to have this service, and then we can also select specific prices. So first, let's add in some staff, right? We have Daryl and we have Rebecca. However, Rebecca's uh, more experienced than Daryl, right? So Rebecca has a special price. So here, I'll select specific price, and Rebecca charges $50 for the actual haircut. So she charges 50 bucks, and that's just how it is. So here, I'll click on Save Service. So that's how we can add in specific uh, prices for specific users. Next, we have timesheet. Now let's say, for example, this haircut is only available in specific times of the business operation. That's actually pretty practical, right? You know, sometimes like they might get there like around 11 and they only work at two o'clock and then they go home. You would have to configure that here. So for example, the normal haircut would only be available when? And then you can configure that right here and also add in breaks and stuff like that. You can also add in special days as well. So if the normal haircut is only available on specific days within the work week, you would go ahead and also configure that right there. All right, and then lastly we have extras. So extras are just basically add on features, right? So let's say we have the normal haircut, right? However, sometimes people wanna color their hair, right? They might wanna change the color. We can add that as an extra. So this will be, hair color, right? We have hair color, right? And then I'll go ahead and select a picture here, but uh, I don't really got any good ones here. We don't we don't have any good ones. I'll just go ahead and select, uh, I don't know, we'll go ahead and select this one again. Well, we're, we're, we're selecting it again here. All right, now the next thing we need to select is the max quantity. So how many times can a person get their hair colored? 
well, one time, right? So we're just gonna select one. However, if this is something like in a service where they can buy multiple times, you might wanna add in more quantities. Okay, got that. Now we're gonna select the price. How much does this cost? Well, 15 bucks. 15 bucks to get your hair colored. That's, that is a great, a great deal. And how long will it take to get your hair colored? Uh, it, it might take a while, right? It might even take longer than the actual hair <laughs> haircut, but for tutorial purposes, I'm just putting in 10 minutes. Okay, you guys can put in whatever you want. I'm just putting in 10 minutes. Then I'll click on save extra. All right, cool. So now we have saved this extra. Now let's click on save service. Okay, so we have successfully added one service to our uh, barber shop. So congratulations. That did take a little bit of time, but uh, now you guys understand that uh, we have one service for one category. Now, for tutorial purposes, I'm gonna add in one more just to kind of work with you here. So um, I'm gonna click on this plus again, right? Now, when I click on the plus in this specific category, I'm creating a service for this category. If I wanna add another one here for beard shave, I'll click on this plus for beard shave, and then I will go ahead and add in a service here, okay? So I just wanna make that clear. The plus icon is referring to the actual uh, category of the service. So here I'll put on service and we'll go to beard, right? So this is the beard cut plus, and we're gonna select this guy. We'll just cruise through this. $100 to get your beard cut, and uh, we'll say this, takes about an hour. Maybe this is like a really high end, you know, beard cut or something, whatever, you know. And then I'll click on save service. All right, now one thing to note. So here I just went ahead and I added it and I just didn't configure the staff, okay? And when you do that, you're gonna see that only one person is available. Now, if you wanna add multiple people to that service, just click back on the pencil icon and then you need to go back and select staff, okay? So Rebecca is available, however, Daryl is also available. So I want both of these staff to be able to work on the beard, right? So then I'll click on save service. So when you guys do this, you kind of need to configure the actual services and find out their schedule to make sure it doesn't overlap or that they add the service when they're not working. So you just need to kind of figure out your employee schedule and accommodate that with the services that you offer. And then also here we have makeup, right? So here I'll click on plus and service. And then we'll do uh, makeup, right? And then right here under the actual uh, and I will put makeup here, and this is $100. And this is exclusive to Rebecca, right? Because Rebecca is the only person here that does makeup. And we can select a specific price as well for Rebecca, since she does the only person here who does makeup, but that's up to you. I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just ignore that for now. And then we'll go ahead and select a duration. So this would take around 30 minutes. And uh, we'll leave the time slot as like 35 or something, right? And then click on save service. All right, so here we go. So we offer three different categories, right? We have haircut, beard shave, and makeup, okay? Rebecca and Daryl do the normal haircut, and Rebecca and Daryl also do the beard cut, and then Rebecca only does makeup. You know what, actually, let's change this. Why, why is Rebecca doing beards? No, we, we gotta change that. We made a mistake, we made a mistake. All right, there we go. We're gonna save service, and there you go. So that makes a little bit more sense. Now you guys can always go ahead and click on list view and view this as a list view as well if you guys want to do that, all right? So after we've added in the services, we are pretty much done, you know? So we've added in all of the actual uh, staff, we've added in the services, the dates, the times, everything is ready to go. All right, so now let's go ahead and have a quick little overview about all this, just so we're on the same page, right? So here we have the dashboard, right? The dashboard is where you can read all your analytics, right? The reports is seeing uh, your money, right? It's also seeing how many appointments you are making, the most earned locations, and also the most earning staffers. So you can see who's making the most money. Next, we have appointments. Now, when people book an appointment, it will be available right here. However, you guys can always manually enter appointments. So let's say someone calls to your business instead of actually going to your website. Right here, I'll click on add new appointments. And this is where you can add an appointment manually. So let's, let's say, uh, all right, someone called and they want to get a haircut at uh, 2 p.m., right? So here we go, Las Vegas, right? We got the haircuts, 2 p.m., or there we go, normal haircut and then Daryl, right? And then what day? I'll just say it's, uh, we'll just say it's Tuesday, right? Because we're closed on the weekends here. And then I'll select 2 p.m., right? 
Here we go. There we go. Wait, no, no, it's 14, right? Yeah, 14. So you notice how the times here are different because we added in those buffers. So that's why that's, uh, that buffer will make a difference on all of your time slots. So next we have the customer section and right away you'll notice that's, oh my gosh, we don't have any customers. Well, we can add a customer right here. If I click on this little plus icon, we can add in a customer. So who are we providing the service for? Well, John Wilson called, John Wilson, right? And then, you know, there we go. That's his email. This is his phone number, yada, yada, yada. You don't have to really do this for all of your customers, you know, only maybe like the people that you know really well, but I'll just go ahead and click on save here. And once we do that, it will then save John, right? As our customer. And then we'll click on save. All right, cool. So now you'll see we have created a manual appointment for John. He's coming at Tuesday around two o'clock. So that's how we can manually add in appointments. Now, if I click on calendar here, you will then see that uh, that uh, appointment listed here. So you'll see that, uh, you know, we have an appointment and we can click on it and get a little bit more information about it. You can also edit it if you choose to do that by clicking on the edit button just to like, you know, just to edit the actual appointment or you can reschedule it or whatever you want to do. You guys can also add in new appointments right here by clicking on the plus icon and adding in new appointments on this date. So if you guys don't want to add the appointments through this section, you guys can always do it here, which I do like this a little better because this gives you a visual of all your appointments, right? Makes sense. Uh, next we have payments. We'll do payments a little later. All right. Uh, customers. So we did add John already, right? We did create John. However, you can always click on add a new customer and then you can create new customers here manually, just like we did before. All right. And then we have services here, which we just did earlier. Ugh, ugh, I don't like this list view. Let's do graphic view. That, that looks much better. I, I really love this. It's just, I mean, I don't know why. I mean, are we getting dumber? I just, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just like this. It's so like, it's just easy to see on the eye, you know? Uh, here we go. Let's click on staff. And we have our staff there. We also have locations. You can add in or modify the locations there. Coupons, let's add in a quick coupon here. Add a coupon. The coupon is Daryl, right? So this is Daryl and this gives us 50% off the haircut. This is amazing. You can also select the dates. So I'll just say this is available uh, for the whole month. Uh, usage limit, you can select a specific amount of usage per, um, you know, per customer or how many times you want them to use it and stuff like that. So I'll just add in a coupon. So Daryl gives 50% off uh, our haircut, which is pretty cool. Next we have gift cards. Gift cards are pretty much the same thing. However, they also do have a balance on the actual gift card. So for example, if you wanna give them a code to use, they can go and enter in that code on the uh, website when they check out and they will have a balance left over. So a coupon is a one-time use. A gift card has an entire balance, okay? So this was Wilson, right? And this gift card is for $100. And you can select this gift card for various locations, right? I'll put Las Vegas and Montana. And then also what services is this good for? Well, I'll just put all of them, you know? So we're giving them a $100 uh, gift card, and this is for everybody. So we're not excluding this. There we go, there we go. And then add a gift card. So if someone does use this, they do have the option to keep using this as a gift card, which is really, really cool. I do love that feature. Here we have notifications. So we have email notifications. This is where you guys can configure your email. So we have new appointments, right? Like we talked about, we have the reschedule, we have the approved, and then you guys can go ahead and add in whatever you want. Now on the left side right here, you'll see that this says to customer and this right here says to staff. So you just wanna make sure that uh, when you do create these notifications, that um, they correspond to the customer versus the staff. So I'll go ahead and walk you guys through and let's let's do this here. So for for new appointments, right? This is to the customer. Thank you, thank you for registering. You have a new appointment with Daryl's Salon. We are looking forward, right, to meeting you. And then I'll just go ahead and enter in these short codes right here. So I wanna go ahead and enter in these short codes, right? So we have the uh, appointment date time, right? We have various options you can pick. I would just go ahead and use the appointment date time, right? I think that's a little bit, uh, I like that option, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and select the appointment date time here. And you can also select the ID because remember they did get a confirmation. You can go ahead and say, these are for your records. So I think adding in the appointment ID is also pretty good. 
And B Booknetic will propagate all the information to your customer. So you guys can go ahead and enter in these if you choose to do that. I mean, you can get really crazy, you know, even the customer information. So uh, right here, maybe we can even enter in the customer's full name to make it more exclusive to them, right? So it's like, hey, uh, you know, hey, Jonathan Taylor, you know, so when they get the email it'll notify them by their, by their information they used to uh, sign up with. Uh, we do have other information like location information and everything else, but uh, this is something that you're gonna have to do on your own, but uh, I'll go ahead and just finish this off. Looking forward to take your money. All right, so that is our, that is our email. And then we'll click on uh, save changes. All right, and once you guys are done, you guys can go ahead and do the same for the customer and also the staff. And you guys can, you know, create templates for your own uh, emails that are sent to your customer. Now you guys can always click on send test email to send a test email transaction. But before we do that, we have to first set the specific email that we are sending it from. So we'll come back to that in just a little bit. But uh, you guys can do the same thing for SMS notifications and WhatsApp notifications. Now, I'm not going to go through those because that does require specific other accounts and other websites. And there is a process for it. So if you guys do want to have SMS notifications and WhatsApp notifications, I would recommend to check out the documentation with Booknetic. Uh, right here, we have invoices. So you guys can create invoices here and send them to specific uh, clients if you choose to do that. Uh, also, we have appearance. Now, you guys have seen that we have a very, uh, you know, this is one color, right? But maybe you have a specific brand, right? Maybe you have like a red brand or a brown brand and you want to kind of carry that style throughout your websites. Uh, you guys can pick a specific color or you guys can create your own. Uh, right here, you guys see I made a custom one, but it is quite ugly. So let's click on uh, create a new style here and we can create a new style from scratch. So um, here I'll put a... Uh, the Wilson form, right? The Wilson form. And um, here we have the Fawn family. We can change like the background color here. So if you want something to kind of match like your color scheme, you can go ahead and select it there. I'll just select, uh, I don't know, green or whatever. And then here we can go ahead and select the uh, primary background color. And you guys can see it change on the actual form itself. Uh, this form button, we need to change that. You know, it's, it's not looking that good here. So the background label steps, change that. Uh, here we have the background. I'm sorry, the active steps. So whatever you're currently active on, you can go ahead and adjust it there. And then these ones are like the grayed out ones. So it's the ones that you haven't really gone through yet. So uh, maybe leave that to gray or something like that. So the user knows, but you guys can go through this and design your own form. And once you guys are done, you'll just click on save and then you can uh, save this form by going over here and clicking on it. So right here, I'll click on select to use this specific form that we created. All right. Let's keep going here. Custom forms. Now, custom forms are basically forms that ask your users specific questions when they select specific services. So let's do it. Let's go over here and click on create a new form and let's create one from scratch here. So we have a bunch of different ones, text inputs, label, and also we have checkbox. But before we do that, let's go ahead and name this form. So this is going to be like the, uh, we can name this anything, right? Uh, this will be like, the style form. Now, which form do you want to ask questions on? I'm sorry, which, which, uh, this form, where do you want it to display for the services, right? So here we have select services. So if a user selects a normal haircut, then this form will also propagate and ask them specific questions, right? So let's just select the normal haircut for now. Don't worry about if you guys don't understand what's going on here. We will run a test transaction and show you guys everything about what's going on. So don't panic just yet. We'll I'll show you everything, but let's just keep going here. So here we have the text input, right? But I want to change this. So this will be like, um, uh, is this your first time, right? Is this your first time? And then here we'll put like the, uh, the placeholder. You could put like yes or no or something like that. Yes slash no. Here you would put the minimum length and then maximum of characters. So if you don't want them to write like a whole essay, just limit it to like 200 or something like that, right? Uh, here we have a help text and then is this required? So do you want them to fill this out? Well, I'm gonna say yes. So here we have label. Now label is just something that you want to let them know, right? So this can be like the, the, the terms and conditions, right? Or something like that. I, I don't really know, but it, this is just something that um, you want them to see not necessarily for them to check, but just some text where you can write stuff and stuff like that. Here we have the checkbox. Now for the checkbox, we can ask them questions like, are you allergic to hair dye, right? That makes a lot of makes sense, right? So 
are you allergic to hair dye, right? Hair dye, there we go. And uh, for choice number one, right, we have yes. And choice number two, we also have no. So the, we have an additional form, right, that asks people more questions when they fill out the normal haircut. So I'll click on save form here. All right, cool. And now let's go ahead and go over here to uh, settings. So uh, one thing I do wanna talk about is your customers do get their own front end panel. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the booking form right now, just to see at where we're at. So let's go ahead and go back to our website here. And what I wanna first do is go over here to pages and click on add new. So let's first create a booking form, right? So this is the booking form. And I'm gonna go ahead and put no sidebar. Now uh, the form will actually propagate on a short code, but it also has a little, um, what is it called? It has a uh, little, I guess you wanna say a Gutenberg block, but it's just a short code guys, it's really not a block. So you would just take this short code and you can put this anywhere on your website and then the form would propagate anywhere you want, right? So first let's click on publish and publish and just take a look at what's going on here. So here I'll click on view page and here we go. So we have our booking form. Let's go through the process now and just go through like the actual booking form and just take a look and make sure everything's correct. So here we go. We got Las Vegas and we have Montana. I'll go ahead and select Las Vegas. Here we have staff, right? So uh, here I'll click on Rebecca and Rebecca's haircut costs $50. Remember earlier how we said Rebecca has a specific price so if I actually go back right here and I click on Daryl, you'll see the haircut only costs $25. Okay, so remember, uh, Rebecca has her own specific prices for a haircut. So uh, right here, I'll click on normal haircut. And then we also have extra services. So remember earlier how we created the, uh, the hair color? They can click on this and accept it if they want. However, they can just click on next step if they want to completely skip the extra services because they're not mandatory. So right here, I'll click on next step. Here we have date and time. Now, right away, we are closed on weekends, so we don't have Friday and Saturday displayed. And uh, we'll go ahead and select a date, date, you know, date and time. And here we have information. So uh, right here, they're gonna go ahead and fill this out, right? So this will be like, uh, I'll put Daryl Wilson with a lot of N's so we can distinct it from the other ones. Now here we have the form, right? Because since the user selected a haircut, now the form is going to display. So is this your first time? I'll put yes. Terms and conditions, remember this is just a label, so this can be anything that you want, right? Got it? And then we have, are you allergic to hair dye? Well, I'll put no. And then I'll click on next step. And here we have a few different options. So they have credit card, PayPal, and then they also have local, right? So they can pay uh, various ways. They can also pay when you're there. However, remember we have a coupon code. So the coupon code is Daryl, right? And if I check that, uh, we will see the price uh, cuts in half. So that is a great discount. However, we also have a gift card. Now remember the gift card is a balance, so they can keep using it until the balance is applied. So what I'm gonna do here is just enter in the uh, actual gift card, click on add, and then you'll see the price drops to zero because we have a $100 balance on our gift card. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and click on confirm booking right here. And there you go. So now we have the actual number, we have the confirmation, and the booking has been uh, completed. Now let's go back over here to our dashboard, just take a quick look to see if this has uh, filled out. There we go. We have Daryl Wilson at the way bottom right there, and you guys can see it works just fine. So congratulations, guys. We have now a, a successfully established a booking for our uh, website. Now uh, let's go ahead and just go back really quick right here to the actual uh, settings here. So we actually know how to implement this booking form, right? Now you can take this form and pretty much put it anywhere on your website. Now, let me just quickly go ahead and just kind of give you an example. So uh, I created this page for the booking form, right? However, you might wanna add it to somewhere on your website that makes sense. So depending on what page builder that you're using, you would just take that page and maybe just put it inside of a button, right? So users are navigated right straight to the booking process. So for example, I'll just go ahead and put it in this little button right here. I don't, know, I don't know why I did that. What was that? Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. I put it in there. Click on updates and go to view page. So let's say, for example, someone comes to my website for the very first time and they click on book appointments. It will then take them right to the booking form where they'll go ahead and book on our website. So it's a really cool form that we got going on right here. 
Uh, let's go ahead and go check out the general settings. So let me go ahead and give you guys a quick rundown of the general settings. And then we'll also talk about the front end panel for users who wants to reschedule or cancel their appointments. So here we have the general settings, right? And this is where you can adjust the general settings. Now, one important option to select is the time format, because in America, we don't use the 24 hour format for Europe and Asia, uh, they do. But for United States, we enter the 12 hour format. So that's if you want like, you know, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., stuff like that, you would go ahead and uh, uh, add that there. You guys can also enter in your Google Maps API key right here. I do have another video that talks about that. And at the end of this video, I'll just give you a source on where you can uh, find that out or learn how to get yours. Uh, but I'll go ahead and click on Save Changes here. All right, so next we have the front end panel. So the front end panel uh, right here, you'll see that, let's say for example, you don't want staff, right? So let's go back over here. Let's say like you're a restaurant, right? If you're a restaurant, you might not wanna have like staff. I mean, you could have specific chefs, but I don't think restaurants do that, right? So uh, if you do wanna take out staff, you can just take that out. And then the staff section would then disappear. So that's what this option is referring to, right? So uh, you, get, you guys can add or take out steps if you choose to do that. Uh, here we have customer portal. Now, by default, this is enabled, I'm sorry, disabled, right? But we can always go ahead and enable this. And we can also create a specific page for the actual portal. So let's do that. Let's go over here and go to plus new and page. And this will be like the uh, portal for customers. And they also have a short code right here. It's a block as well, the customer panel. So it's booknetic. Dash WCP. Now remember, you don't have to use a default editor. This is a short code, so you can put it anywhere that you want, all right? And the sidebar, no sidebar, publish and publish. So now let's click on view page here. All right, so we can see that we have our portal and users can go over here and say, nah, I wanna go ahead and reschedule this. I wanna cancel it. And they can always adjust this to their liking. So that's pretty cool. However, let's say for example, you don't want users to reschedule, right? You're saying, no, 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 you can't reschedule, bro. You know, you, you're locked in, you know, you committed to the time. You can take that out. And if I save changes and I refresh the page, uh, you'll see that little thing has disappeared now. So they can no longer reschedule appointments. So you can have full control over your, your portal uh, for your customers. And you guys can put this anywhere you want. So obviously you might wanna put this on the menu or something like that, but uh, this is uh, what that's referring to. It is the customer portal. And you guys can go ahead and restrict those settings right there. Uh, so we had the booking steps, right? Customer portal, All right? Pretty simple, right? Pretty easy to understand. And then we also have labels. So uh, instead of staff, you can say something else, right? Maybe you don't want it to say staff. Maybe you can say like our team, right? So our, our team, and then you can go ahead and adjust these to your liking. So you don't have to make it say like our services. You can make it say whatever you guys uh, want to put. All right, pretty cool. Uh, payment settings, we'll come to that last. Don't worry about that. We, we will come to money, you know, don't worry. But here you guys can update your company details, your business hours, your holidays. Uh, your email settings, this is where you're going to want to enter in your email right here. So you see, I have the WordPress email. I put my email and the sender name is Daryl. Once you guys enter this in, then you can go back to your email templates and then you can send preview emails and then test it out on your own. There is also SMPT, but uh, I'm not gonna go through that guys. I have a whole nother video on Google, I'm sorry, uh, Gmail with SMPT, but that's another video and uh, I'm not really gonna cover it in this video because that can take quite some time. But uh, I'll go ahead and select save changes here. And we have some integration settings. So if you guys do wanna integrate some other platforms, you guys can do that there. And also if you guys are working on multiple websites, you guys can take all these settings and export it onto another website by clicking on export data. And then on the other website, you can import all this data. All right, so let's go ahead and jump onto the last section. And now let's talk about payment methods, right? So I think, I think at this point, you guys have pretty much got it down, right? We went through all these options on the, on the left side. You guys are very familiar with everything over here. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is talk about payment gateways. Now there's two services I recommend. Uh, here I'll click on payment uh, settings, which is uh, Stripe, PayPal, and we also have uh, local payments. Now you guys can also use WooCommerce. However, if you guys decide to use WooCommerce, I'll just go ahead and give you guys a quick little example. Uh, the checkout page, I'm sorry, the thank you page will not display. So you will use the thank you page for WooCommerce instead of the thank you page for uh, Booknetic. 
So if you guys are still not sure what I'm talking about, let me just give you a quick little example here. I'll just go ahead and quickly fill this out. And then we will go ahead and uh, I'll just give you a quick little example here. Yeah, we are allergic. No. Yes, I have to fill this out. I, ma I made the commitments. You know, I made the commitments. Here, I'll click on local confirm booking. So this is the page that I'm talking about. If you select WooCommerce, this page will not display. The WooCommerce thank you page will propagate instead. So if you do like this page, then you might want to set up local payments or credit cards using Booknetics Payment Merchant. So uh, that is the uh, WooCommerce option. You guys can also select local payments. This will allow people to uh, just select, you know, pay locally and they can pay you at your store. They also have Stripe and PayPal. Now I'll go ahead and quickly walk through both really quick. So this is stripe.com and it is a payment merchant where you guys can go ahead and sign up for free. There is no credit check. This company will take the money and they will automatically deposit it onto your account. All you guys need is a bank account and just some personal info to get started. Uh, there is no monthly fee. There is no credit check, nothing like that. So it's really easy to get started and pretty much anyone can do it. Uh, there's also PayPal as well. However, for the PayPal option, you guys will need to have a business account and there is a monthly fee for that. You know, guys, I'm, I'm just the middleman. You know, I'm just the middleman. I'm just trying to trying to help you guys out. I'm, I'm on your I'm on your side, you know, but uh, unfortunately, PayPal does have a uh, monthly payment. So that's that. But uh, I'll walk you guys through both platforms because maybe some of you are already using PayPal business, which is what I use too. So I'll go ahead and click on sign in right here. All right, so this is my Stripe account. Now, once you guys go through the process, you guys will go ahead and uh, be brought to your dashboard. And this is the new dashboard. Now, first I wanna go ahead and make sure that this is working with uh, Booknetic. So I'm gonna turn this on test mode right here. And then we're gonna click on developers. Now, this is the same process for live payments. So you just need to just you know uncheck that. And now these are live payments, but I just wanna test this out really quick. So over here under API keys, uh, we have the publishable key and the secret key. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the publishable key, go back to Booknetic and make sure that the publishable key is there, right? Publishable key, oop, and then also the secret key as well. So I'll, I'll go ahead and paste in the secret key and then I'll click on save changes. So at this point, it is now connected with Stripe and we can always run a test transaction. So uh, let's go ahead and refresh this page just to see if it's connected with Stripe. All right, so I'll go ahead and go through this process. Rebecca, normal haircuts, here we go. All right, date and time. We'll just select a random time here. Uh, yes, yes, oh, I, I am allergic, you know. <laughs> here we go, but now I'm gonna click on uh, credit card. So if I click on local, it'll just take me right to the thank you page. So let's click on a credit card here and see what happens. All right, so we have normal haircut and we also have the image of the actual service, right? And here is the business name, which is just Daryl, right? Now for the email, I'll just throw in some random email in here, but for test mode, you're always gonna enter in 424242 and then you're just gonna enter in some fictitious information. And this is Daryl, let's just put uh, Wilson man, right? Well, the Da man, here we go. And I will click on United States and I'll enter in a zip code and then click on pay. So this is the actual exact process of when people pay you on your website. This is the same checkout process that they will also experience on your uh, website. So it is processing the payments, right? So for $50, right? And uh, it's done. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and double check it. First, let's go to Booknetic here and just take a look to see if it is actually accepting the payments and everything's working. All right, cool. So there we go. We have the Daryl Wilson and we have the normal haircut for $50. Now let's take a look over at Stripe to make sure it's also uh, getting those payments. So here we go, payments. And there you go. So we have the email address on file, right? And it's also for 50 bucks. So congratulations, Stripe is now connected to your website. And again, if you wanna take real money payments, just click on this uh, test mode and now it's off test mode, go to developers and then the API keys, and then just go through the same process over again to accept real money payments on your uh, website. All right, cool. So next, uh, we have the other option, which is the, uh, was it the PayPal? Let's go ahead and go over here to payment settings. And now we have payment methods for PayPal. So right here, so we have two options, right? We have sandbox and then we have live mode. Now you guys will need to go ahead and click on the link in the description. It'll take you to your accounts to create an application. So uh, the link I believe is 
developer.paypal.com. Now, I'm not an affiliate, so I don't get any money if you guys click on any of these links right here. But uh, right here, I'll click on Get API Credentials. Now, just remember that you guys will need to have a PayPal business account in order for this to work. So I'll go ahead and log into my dashboard. And then I will type in Booknetic here. And I'll make sure that this is my email account. And then click on Create an Application. And make sure that's selected to Merchant because you are the seller. Once you create the application, it'll then give you your client ID and then your secret ID. So all you have to do is just copy their client ID, go back to your website, and then paste the paste it in there. And then you'll also do the same thing for the client secret key for your uh, PayPal account. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy to get started up with. And once you're done, you'll just click on save changes and congratulations, PayPal is now connected to your website. All right, so let's just have a quick little overview about this plugin because we did cover quite a bit, right? So on the dashboard, this is where you can visit all of your appointments. You guys can always modify them as well or cancel them if you choose to do that. For the report section here, this is a report, or I'm sorry, the uh, reports of your earnings, also the highest earners and the highest earning locations. Uh, the appointment section is where all of your appointments will be displayed and you guys can always adjust this by customer by staff and you guys can just fiddle around with this and just get the hang of it uh, the calendar section i do like this a lot better because here you can see the appointments by the calendar so that makes it really easy uh, here we have payments and you can see all the money that we have made we who has made it uh, and also what method as well also if users have used gift cards you guys can see that the user has used gift cards on your sites uh, here is a list of customers here is the services now you guys can always readjust this to your liking but i really do like this graphic mode let me know in the comments if you guys like this too i just i don't know i just feel like that's really easy to read right uh, here we have our staff right locations uh, our coupon codes the time was used and the usage limit as well we have the gift cards notifications where it is like the email and stuff like that so you do want to make sure you configure your email notification that's a pretty uh, important one we have the invoices, the appearance, uh, which we did earlier, and the custom forms, and then also we have the settings. Now I do wanna talk about one more thing, and that is the Google API key. So uh, if you guys do wanna add in the Google API key, I do have this video right here, and uh, I'll leave this in the description. In about the two hour mark in this video, I show you exactly step-by-step -step on how to get the Google Maps API key. I should probably make a dedicated video for this, but uh, yeah, it's right here, but uh, it starts at two, two hours and it goes to around 210 so it only takes a few minutes to get it but uh that's if you want to add the google maps api key to your website and uh yeah once you guys do add that you guys can enter it in the settings and then uh, booknetic can go ahead and pick up locations based off of the google maps api key so i hope this video really helped you guys out um you guys have any questions for me let me know in the comments below i know this was a long video but i just really wanted to stress that this uh, plugin is just really great. You know, I, I've, I've been using it and I have to say this is the best booking plugin I've probably ever used for WordPress. And I have made, you know, many videos on um, booking plugins, but I think this is just like the all-in-one solution for, um, you know, a booking website. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like this video. And until then, I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.